pussy in your face with style and grace. A wreck where he direct got flair and taste. Holds no drop crowd when he in the mix. In a throwback jersey and custom kicks. People in the industry joined up and be like, hey, I don't like this politician or this whoever. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm going I'm going to tell stories unless you know you change your way of thinking or whatever. That just recently happened, um I I you know like like I don't really read Twitter, but like people send me links all the time and there was something about like a gay male performer who was gonna out a conservative politician who was very homophobic <laughs> with with like hiring uh male escorts. <laughs> it was like, Hey, there you go, man. We love to see it. Oh my god, it would be well, you know, being in the industry, you hear a lot of stories and you witness a lot of stuff and you just kind of be like, mm, I got to keep quiet on this. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I, mean, I told you who all I've slept with and there's some pretty notable names in yeah, there. Yeah. And it's like, it's like if I wanted to take someone down, I could easily take them down. Right. And we do hold a lot of power like that, but at what cost? Like, why would we want to... Um, you know, just kind of ruins someone's life for no reason. Yeah. But if it's for a reason, like for a politician, or if you're going to out someone that is, you know, talking shit about sex workers, or for what reason? Like, yeah. why why would you not out them? You know, if they're going to, if you're good enough for them to sleep with, you know, then they should have to own up to it. Yeah, but if it's yeah. just like a normal person, or like a, just a normal celebrity that isn't talking shit about whatever you are, then, you know, just let him be. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's that hypocrisy, I think. And that's what, like, that kind of, you know, boils your blood when you're, like, see the hypocrisy in some of these people. And, you know, it's like the the handful of people that I uh, encountered or know stories about, I would share just, like, with a couple of close friends, you know, like civilian friends. And they're like, oh, my God. And I've changed a lot of people's views on some people. <laughs> just been like, hey, man, let me just tell you a little bit of the background to this yeah. to this, to this, this person. Um, but but that's things like we all have skeletons in our closet, right? And so um, it is what it is. And it's just like it depends what kind of a person you are. Yeah, like, like if it's a politician who's just constantly, constantly like on this whole like it's and it's mostly like you know conservative politicians who are very homophobic and how many do you find that all of a sudden like oh yeah well you know he was caught with you know an escort you know a male escort, which is not a bad thing it's it, you do what you do you're an adult but when you're judging others for what you do yeah. that that's where the problem comes in and the absolutely yeah and the man can you imagine one day? Well, that's what Heidi Fleiss did that years ago. She wrote a book. She wrote a book and outing a bunch of uh, celebrities. And to me, I'm just kind of like, you know, like when you're outing somebody for like buying an escort, who cares? It's like adults doing adult things. It is what, like if like, you have to hurting somebody or the person's underage, sure. But other than that, yeah, who cares? If they're doing something, you know, not even illegal or, you know, morally wrong by whomever standards. Yeah. But if it's like, you know, dangerous if they're if they have a record of you know sleeping with underage women or underage kids yeah. or you know anything like anything like that anything that's harmful or you know maybe a woman is being sex trafficked and they partook in that like it, it's that's harmful and that should be called out but if it's just you know having an escort like calling an escort and whatever there's no no problem with that. We're all consenting adults. Like, I hire it work from time to time, and I enjoy it. I think it's it's fun. Um, Do you I, really? I Do you really? Yeah. What? Yeah. what? And while it's, like, it's, it's, it's illegal, I feel that it should be just decriminalized. Like, oh, 100%. There's, there's no problem with it. As long as, because the huge problem is they don't feel safe reporting a crime that happens to them. Um because they will be arrested. If they're like, yes, I was escorting, but this person beat me and raped me and, you know, robbed me, then they're going to get arrested and they're never going to find the guy that did that to them because they did an illegal act as well. Right. Which it makes no sense to me. Like, there, there's such a thing as survival sex work for a lot of women that, you know, they turn to sex work as a... Uh, as a means to make money because, you know, they might not have the availability to do anything else or the skill to do anything else or the education to do anything else. So there is survival sex work and 
these things happen to them frequently and there's no protection. Uh, so right. if we just decriminalized, not even legalized, it, as long as it was decriminalized, so they felt safe to seek help when, you know, these things happened to them and, you know, really received justice, it would, you would see a huge turn in things. And, you know, with the laws like SESTA and FOSTA, which took down a lot of the sites that hosted, um, hosted different things for escorts and johns and all of that uh, really ruined a lot of women's lives because they didn't have a way to promote their services and they couldn't have references for these people that were trying to hire them. So some of these people that were trying to hire them were known to be abusive or known to, you know, shortchange them or, you know, whatever, and they had no way to check that. Right. Um, the, the government took away their system. So it, while they said it was to end sex trafficking, it didn't affect sex trafficking at all. It really only affected and impacted these people trying to do things um, on their own and their own safety and, right. you know, things like that. So laws like that are not benefiting anyone. <laughs> it's no, just, like, you know, making it more difficult to be a sex worker. Well, yeah, because it also pushes it further underground where there is a lot more predators out there to take advantage of of people. Uh, yeah, if you make it to if you make it where people are not afraid to come forward with a crime that was committed against them because just because you're a sex worker, you don't deserve to be hurt or attacked or any of that. Um, for instance, like the my girlfriend, whatever, 16, 17, 18 years ago, she was a performer and she was an escort. And she always told me that if she ever got hurt doing an escorting job, she will never go to the cops because her mentality was, who's going to believe a hooker? And um, and so she kind of lived by that, unfortunately, because she did get attacked once really bad. Uh, and she didn't go to the police. She just wouldn't go to the police. And she, because and she, she was in town and she had to take a few days off from work because of bruising and things like that. And then when we went back to work, I took her to the office one of my bosses took me aside and was like, hey, oh, we actually took her aside, I'm sorry, took her aside and they asked her if I beat her. You know, and, and it was one of those things where it's like, Ugh. And, and she and she still would not, the one thing she told me was, which is kind of disgusting, that he was a film producer. That's all she told me. And um, and then you just hear a lot of that, you know, and the, the, that power that these yeah. people wield and, and um uh, people are afraid to to speak up because because of that, and so that that's like to that's the part that's like the hardest for me is like is hearing things like that and just seeing that happen to someone in my life, uh, and then you hear stories of other people and it's like man, it, it it's sad that there's like no protection. It's kind of like it almost goes like kind of like with um you know like undocumented people here they they're afraid yeah. to commit a, 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 a afraid to report a crime because they're afraid they're going to get deported. Uh, it it just yeah. it just it's a it's the same it's the same thing it uh, because instead of looking at what this person as a victim you look at them as a criminal as well which is kind of horrible it's completely horrible so now it, it alienates these people and uh, makes them you know just kind of internalize the issues that they have and it's not healthy because then the person that committed that just keeps committing more crimes and just keeps going and, and creating more victims and. Yeah, man. Absolutely. What? How do we go from like all, all all this cool animal talk to like this this freaking deep conversation? <sighs> <laughs> it happens every time. <laughs> I know. Sheesh. I'm looking at my notes. I'm like giant black anaconda. <laughs> <That's> the... <laughs> <laughs> and now we're talking about sex work and the dangers. <laughs> the, the dangers of sex. Oh, and the, because you were talking about like buying escorts, which like was like blew my mind. Like, what just happened here? Where did that go? <laughs> But well, hey. I, I just I, I see the value in uh, in hiring sex workers. Like even at the strip club, like I'm never going to ask a woman specifically, like, "Hey, will you come home with me for a certain amount of money?" But if it's like they're offering services or something, I'm like, "Yes, that sounds like a good time. Let's do that." Huh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, or you know, if I'm out of town and you know just looking for some fun, I'll browse the ads and send out a couple of calls and maybe one of them will work out. 
So it's like, no, I, I, I see the value in it. Can you imagine? Just, can you yeah. ma- imagine you order a girl? Let's say it's a girl, and all of a sudden a girl that was in the industry and you two didn't get along shows up. <laughs> they were like, hmm. and I always hire from the providers directly because I don't want there to be like a pimp situation or anything like that, or they feel like they have they don't just keep all their money or anything like that. I want them to you know, come and enjoy their time and have a good time and just keep all their money. And, you know, I like to do stuff like that, like instead of hiring through a service. Damn. Wow. This was like, this is a revelation here. Well, well, that's good though. Hey, you know, you keep the money, you keep the money flowing within the adult industry. Good. That's good. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> you, 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 employ, you employ people. But yeah. There's... And they have a good story. Like, wow, I got hired by Christy Max. Like, yeah, that's a that's a good story to me. <laughs> well, well, the crazy thing is, like nobody's come public with it. So you see, you see, there there is hooker etiquette. There really is. Well, for most, you know, there's an there's an etiquette to, to this. <laughs> They're probably just telling their friends. You know, well, that's the whole thing. Is like when I used to travel with the girls and go to the strip clubs, I would hear stories from the strippers about celebrities, and obviously the girls would tell me stories about you know like the, their escort adventures. I actually did a whole podcast called Host Stories, which was like just bunch of escorting stories that i witnessed or <laughs> that i was kind of involved with, with you know just as a third party um like you've heard the one i've told you the one where i was like stuck in the bathroom for an hour while uh that's my favorite story <laughs> yeah, that, that was god i i wish this was where back when where like cell phone cameras were really good so i could have recorded the whole thing but mm. You know, it it is just gonna stay as a story. I could tell my grandchildren one day if I ever have great grandchildren. Well, um, but yeah, it's a. Uh, oh, you know, I have a really interesting story. I was um, in New Jersey, Exotica, and we were just standing around um, outside. She was smoking, and there's this guy walks up to us, and he had like this really unique look about him. Um, he had like, you know, his beard was all like shaved with like little lines and shit like that so she asked him for a cigarette so he gives her a cigarette and then she takes his hat off and puts it on her head and takes a picture and like she's got like her arm on the shoulder and takes a and she's asked me to take a picture of it and puts the hat back on and and goes inside and one of the guys is like i can't believe she did that to him I'm like why who is that and they're like it's pablo escobar jr i'm like <gasps> what what <laughs> And so I, I'm like freaking out. So I go to her. I go, dude, you can't fucking do that. She's like, why? I'm like, that's Pablo Escobar Jr. And she's like, who's Pablo Escobar? I'm like, all the fucking partying you do? Like, you don't know who Pablo Escobar Jr. is? Bullshit. And she's like, no, I don't. So I have to explain to her. She's like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Let's go talk to him. I'm like, what? No, no, no. I don't want to fucking talk to him. So we uh, go over to the booth he's in. He was actually in the Monkey Bars booth. I don't know if you remember that gimmick oh yeah thing. i remember i remember that whole yeah whole adventure. The whole, yes exactly it was like a it was a weight belt with handles on it so yeah <laughs> so the girl where where is it and now, now you there's a guy you got handles on the girl um so he was in that booth so we go in there and she just starts talking to him and she's a little tipsy and i, and I just don't want to be there i'm like man it was already kind of weird because she kind of like disrespected him a little bit and and then um we're about to go back to our booth um, his guy, his assistant, whoever he was, comes up to him and goes like, hey, he wants you guys to come out to Connecticut tonight and hang out with him. And it's like, Ugh. so I have to give him my number. So I so get, I give him my number. We go back to the booth. And she's like, oh my God, it's going to be so much fun. We're going to hang out tonight. They're going to come pick us up and take us to Connecticut. I'm like, no, 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 we're not going. And she's like, what do you yeah, mean we're not no, going? No, honey, you don't understand. We're right? not going. And, and, and she's like, why not? I go, look, look, I go, let me explain to you what's going to happen. What's going to happen is we're going to go. Now, so we're there with, with him and all his buddies. And for all we know, he could be the nicest guy on the planet. I just know Pablo Escobar and his background. So we're going to go and let's say this happens. All of a sudden, you guys are flirting and he tries to touch you and he wants to do more. And you're like, cool, I'll do more. But my rate is this. And what do you think is going to happen? Do you think he's going to pay your rate? Or is he going to want a freebie? Then I'm going to have to step in and be like, hey, uh, you know, uh, uh, I'm sorry. And, and what's going to happen? I'm going to have to give him a freebie first. 
by force, by his force, and then you're next. No, that's not happening. And she's like, no, 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 it'll be fine. I'm like, no, we're not doing this. So, and she had a boyfriend. And she wasn't like banging anybody off camera or off camera for free at least. So, we get back to the room. And all of a sudden she's like, I'm too tired. I just want to go FaceTime with my boyfriend and I don't want to go. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? You told him we're going out. And so not her, his, his guy is blowing up my phone. And I'm just ignoring, ignoring him. Then what happens? Uh, she falls asleep. The phone keeps going off. We're done. The next day we're at our booth. They walk by our booth and give us the dirtiest looks, man. It was it was uh, scary, but it was funny because also then she gets tipsy again later on that day and goes back in their fucking booth and starts talking to them again. She's like, "Seriously, what do you expect to happen?" <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like, what? What is happening here? Why am I doing this? And this is like when I would travel with the girls, and these things would come up, and I'll be thinking, "Like, I have a bachelor's degree in cinematography. I shoot really cool stuff. It's not like I'm doing this for money. I'm doing this to help people out." I need to fucking stop before my leg falls off. Oh, wait. <laughs> you know, and here we are. Here we are. Exactly. Um, I'm always shocked to hear how the Grove would treat you on these trips. Because, like, when I take you on trips, I pay for your hotel. Like, I pay for your flight. Like, I'll pay for all the meals. Like, everything's going to be taken care of. You're not going to have to work a ton. Like, just take a couple pictures. Hang out. I'm cool with whatever. And, yeah. like, but these women, they will, like, treat you like you're their assistant or their slave yeah. or whatever. And it's just wild to me. Well, because, you know, the thing is, and, and, and that's how I feel about a handful. Like, not uh, there was a lot of really, really cool people I traveled with. But, but there were a handful where you're like, I'm not doing this because I need the money. Because I got paid peanuts anyways. And, af- and, and after I would, like, you know, like, pay for half my lunches or whatever, I would go home either br- even or like losing money. So it was literally yeah. going to like, hey, do you want to go with me because you're cheaper than an, a real roadie and we could shoot real cool content and just kind of hang out. And, and I'd be like, sure, because I get to travel on someone else's dime. But then when it would come down to where I'm treated as someone that's beneath somebody or seeing that person treat others around like they're beneath them. It would like really, really irritate me to a point like there were a couple there were a couple of times where I was just like, I'm just gonna go buy a fucking plane ticket and go home. That's what I was thinking to myself. I'm like, I don't need this and and it's bullshit. Um hey, you know, like but there would like like I'll give you an example. Like someone like um when I traveled with London Keys and Jaden James, they made sure that when the DJ was introducing them, they always gave them my bio. And they're like, we want to promote the shit out of you because you shoot really cool stuff for us. We're good friends. And I was like, holy fuck, that's really cool. You know, so like when I traveled with those two and there would be people in the crowd that knew how it was because back then I was still directing for a big company like Anabolic. People are like, will come up to me like, oh, hey, I mean, oh, I'm a big fan of stuff like that. And it was really cool because I'm like, hey, this kind of makes it worth it because it's kind of like, you know, even if we say we don't have an ego, we do. You know, we do because we work hard at our craft and it's nice to be recognized sometimes. Um so, uh, that was really cool, and and they were they were like generous and like crazy generous sometimes. Uh, but yeah, you know, and but then you'll get others that that literally tr- would treat me as their assistant. I'm like, I'm really not here for this. I mean, I don't mind. Like, I'm not lazy. I'll totally do more than expected, and then that's fine. But not when you talk down to me <laughs> and then that would be the the big the, the biggest issue to be talking down to me and talking down to people around and i think just people get caught up in their own shit and uh they don't understand we're not brain surgeons we're not curing cancer we're adult entertainers what the fuck are we you know <laughs> it goes to people's ass exactly. like, what like the fuck? Knowing. yeah sheesh come on but that's you know that's the thing is like especially now well, there's so many people in the industry that are just like entitled, you know, they think that they have like, you know, 50,000 or 100,000 followers on Twitter or Instagram that they're a celebrity, that they made it. And and always hashtag porn star lifestyle, hashtag. Porn. And I would always tell these people, I'm like, do you understand people that are actually porn stars 
don't ever call themselves porn stars. They don't go around hashtagging porn stars because they're business people, business women. Like you shouldn't be you know, aspire to be a porn star. You should be aspire to be a business woman because then you could live off your brand. If you get in the industry to be quote unquote a porn star, and that's all it is because you want to live the lifestyle, your ass is going to leave broke and pissed off. That's what's going to happen. And uh, and you see so much of that all the time, and it's just you're like. I actually had to check a girl once because I'm like, how are you a fucking porn star? Are you on box covers? Do you travel and they make posters of you so people c- go to your signings? No. You know when porn stars died? When DVDs died. When DVDs died, well, DVDs still around, but they're like, you know, <laughs> on life support. You know, you're, when you're on a box cover, you're a porn star because like that DVD, movies were sold off box covers. And, and they were sold because of a specific girl on the box cover. Now it's not like that. Now you're shooting all your content with your cell phone and you're posting it online. You're never going to build up a brand where you're, you're, you're a star because you're watering down your visuals. You're watering down your product. And, uh, but, but it doesn't matter. And, and it also comes down to, so, so what constitutes a porn star now? Somebody who's willing to fuck on camera? Because realistically, anybody, anybody can fuck on camera. You know, it's, okay, but can anybody build a brand? You know, can anybody, you know, you know, that's because that, because like, you know, and then, then the funny thing is like, I, I, I make this analogy quite a bit about like the difference between shooters in LA and Vegas content shooters is that in, in Vegas, there's a lot of content shooters, a lot. And some are super amazing content shooters, but then you get other people that are literally doing to get laid. They pay for their test and all of a sudden they you'd spend 10 bucks on a GoDaddy account. Uh, they create a domain name and all of a sudden they're content shooters. What does that mean? That means you got a te- clean test and you're willing to fuck on camera. That doesn't make you a porn star because I know a lot of people <laughs> that shoot content and make no money because they tell me they're honest with me and they're literally doing it so they get laid and they have regular jobs, which is totally cool. It's totally cool. Just don't let it go to your head. And, and um, you know, like, and I, I use exa- example of a handful of girls that I know um, that are legit porn stars and and are so down to earth and never call themselves that and never treat others as someone that's not on their level. And it'd be like, you know, someone like you, Nicole Aniston, Samantha Saint, Asa Kira, just just a handful of girls that I dealt with, you know? E- even if you are a big name in the industry, what are you doing, really? You know, I mean, you know, you, you, you look good, great, but at the end of the day, you know... Most people that are fans of yours, they're fans of yours because they got their hand on their wiener or on their toy and whatever. So, which is cool. Just don't let it go to your head. And and it, it does. And so I don't travel anymore. Why I don't travel anymore? Because I just can't. I don't want to do it anymore because <laughs> physically it's just brutal for me. Mentally it's brutal. But the stories, you know, like I love the stories. There's some amazing stories that, that I've... Well, encountered. I, I had one girl one time text me. She was um, <laughs> it was crazy. She was in a uh, in Vegas in a hotel room, and she's all like, "I think I'm in a hotel room with a bunch of Chinese gun dealers." <laughs> I'm like, oh "What the God. fuck?" I'm like, "You need to get out of there." She's like, "We're trying to figure out how to get out of leave." I'm like, "I didn't even wind up in a hotel room with a bunch of <laughs> Chinese gun dealers." <laughs> yeah, really? How do you end up in that situation? Like, how does that happen? Right. I, <laughs> I know, I know. My goodness, yeah, um, yeah. It, it happens now. Before we go, because uh, I, I think it's getting late. Your time, um, yeah. Because I know you go to sleep like at fucking five p.m. <laughs> okay, it's seven thirty. <laughs> I yeah, you know, like I go to sleep now at like ten, ten thirty, and I wake up six thirty without an alarm clock. Boom, I'm up and I'm ready to go. It's uh. Frankie wakes me up at five thirty because he just screams uh, until I come downstairs and take him OUG. He's you, sitting right here, so I can't say the word. You mean he clucks because you said he sounds like a rooster, right? He does sound like a rooster. He like screams like a rooster. Ridiculous. <laughs> now, um, one last thing. So you've you you've seen like all the stuff that's going on right now, like in the industry where people are getting called out. I mean, like I, all around, you know, in the world, people are finally getting called out on their shit. Yeah. Now, now uh, the one thing I've noticed, like in the industry, is that women that are more about like their brand and and being strong, powerful business women don't get into. Well, even if 
they might get in a situation where you have a scumbag producer, director, company owner, talent that's trying to do something. The, the, those people, those predators will think twice because it, this is a strong woman. So you're, you're like, you know, one of the, the more stronger uh, performers that I know. Have, have you ever encountered anything? I mean, obviously, don't give me any names. Like, I don't want, But have you ever been in a situation where you had, like, these creepy-ass dudes trying to, like, try anything with you? Uh, not that I can recall. I know some male talent that I worked with, especially when I was newer, they were just trying to have sex with me off camera and stuff like that. But it was nothing overly predatory um, where I felt pressured to do anything or pressured to, you know, accept different things for, like, it, like if it were to be a director or something. I know a lot of girls have experienced having to do extras, um, right. either for camera or behind camera for a certain amount of pay or felt that they weren't going to get their pay if they didn't do these things. Um, and I was lucky enough to never experience that. And I think a lot of that is due to having my name um, yeah. and having the voice and being as outspoken as I've always been. Nobody really crossed me like that, especially in the day of social media um, where, you know, you can be called out for anything at any time. I don't think anyone was really willing to risk that for me. Um, but I know so many of so many stories, and I'm sure you do as well, of people that have been taken advantage of um, behind the scenes or even like it's on the camera. Um, yeah. And I, it, with the companies that I worked with, we always, you know, signed the contract and did entrance and exit videos uh, stating that we weren't, pressured and we consented to everything um, and that we were paid the amount that we were supposed to be and, you know, that we weren't under the influence and, you know, all of those things. And for me, that was absolutely true. Yeah. But I do know a couple of women that, you know, find it anyway because they believed that they weren't going to get paid. Um, so it's like, it, I can only speak from my own personal experience that, I was fortunate enough to never have anything like that happen to me. Do I believe that it happens in the industry? Absolutely, especially with newer girls that don't have uh, a large brand or a large name. Um, that they, certain people in production feel that they can take advantage of them, or certain uh, male performers do take advantage of them and you know film content with them and you know not pay them and things like that. Yeah. So. Uh, I think we're all well aware that it does happen um, and that a lot of women either don't know any better or feel pressured to do these activities or, you know, they just don't know any better. They just don't know. Uh, yeah. So it's like, for me, I feel really lucky that it can happen. And I think that the industry definitely has some evolving to do as far as, you know, not being predatory with their behaviors and not trying to get more out of whatever they're paying for. But that's just like every other company, every other industry in this world, they're going to pay as little as possible and try and get as much out of that person as possible. Um, so uh, I understand it from a business perspective, but from a human perspective and moral perspective, it's, it's disgusting. Like you shouldn't, treat people that way you know um, especially in tech work you know and, and uh, yeah i i i've um you know, you know here's the interesting thing I, when i worked for extreme associates we had this reput well the company had this ex uh, um, reputation of like oh horrible scumbags blah, all the, you know and everybody had something bad about to say about him well the owner rob black yeah he was a, he was a dick and he bounced checks but the one thing that our company i never saw was somebody being disrespected and we shot some rough stuff and every girl we show them a movie this is what it is you could come or you could leave you don't take the job and and, and we would stop scenes if it looked like the, the person was uncomfortable but then i know other companies <laughs> that had or directors had re good reputations and you just hear stories and you're right it's like it's it there were so many women that that were afraid to speak up uh because 
they were afraid they're not going to get another job. And that was always the thing. It was like, well, I'm not going to get hired again. I yeah. l- literally distanced myself from every single person that I knew once I figured out or found out that they were a scumbag, I would remove them from my life. And I wouldn't tell them why because there was no reason to. Like, they're not going to change. And I would warn talent about them. Um, I I had a friend that was a production manager. He would try to get blowjobs and make out with the girls. And as soon as I found out, he was gone from my life. I had a co-director that was doing the same thing. He would pull his dick out while driving talent to oh. set. And he straight up would tell me, Nine times out of ten, they won't know what to do, so they'll just give me a blowjob. And it was just like, are you fucking kidding me? And I literally, like, completely distanced myself from this person. And he also told me he loves shooting girl-girl scenes because, the, in his eyes, the girls were still horny after the scene because they didn't get any dick. It was like, are you kidding me? What, what is fucking going on here? But but I, it, it, stuff like that 100% goes on. And so when you see things like what's happening now with, like, Ron Jeremy, for instance, you know, she's like, well... You've heard for years people going like, "Oh, it's just Ron." Well, it doesn't make it right. It's just, oh, it's yeah, just this. It's 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 stupid, you know. And this is why I was like never uh, around him because it was like I just hear these stories and from a ton of people, you know. So it and I would I haven't seen any of it, but you know where, where there's smoke, there's fire, right? You know, if there's a lot of smoke, especially there's, there's probably a hat full of fires. Um, and I I don't know if. Uh, these these are legit stories, but you hear a lot of them. So so you start questioning these situations, and um, there's just like so much of it. And that's that's why like with me, it's always been about first you're a human being, second you're someone's kid, third you're someone's loved one, you possibly someone's mom, and and I think that's why when I shot a lot of brand new girls for Anabolic, the uh, agents felt comfortable bringing the girls to me first because. They always, and this is what like, a couple of the agents would tell me, tell me that they would tell the girls, like, after, uh, Ivan's going to spoil you on set, because when, once you go to other sets, it's not going to be like that. Because, like, I wouldn't yell, I wouldn't scream, you do whatever you feel comfortable doing. If you don't want to do do something, you don't want to do this at all, you can leave. You know, we're not yeah. going gonna, gonna, not gonna to force you to do anything. And I would always have candy and stuffed animals for the girls, which is, I guess, creepy in its own way, but it was never <laughs> supposed to be a creepy thing. It was always supposed to be like... You know, here's a nice thing, you know, nice gesture. So when you leave, you got this cool little stuffed animal. Um, yeah, it's cute. Yeah, you know, and, and I, I've, I've had performers offer me blowjobs on set. And I would turn them down. I had one that got so offended. We used to shoot her quite a bit. She got so offended, she didn't want me shooting her anymore. Because I guess that Not was... Not because you have integrity. Yeah, it was just crazy. It was like, like she felt disrespected. I'm like, I'm actually treating you as a human being. And you can't handle it because you've been blowing everybody in the office. And it's crazy. Um, I had another one and she cornered me. And I showed up and said, and I said to her, wrong set, wrong director. And she respected it. And she was like, okay, no, I appreciate it. And, like, and that, was, that was the end of it. And we actually became friends afterwards. Uh, friends without benefits. <laughs> friends without benefits. Uh, but yeah, you know, like, I'll, I'll tell you one story. And, and then after... After this happened with this performer, her and I became friends. We're still friends, and she's been gone out of the industry for a long time. And you know, she's got a kid, and and she'll text me once in a while. And and I think she actually came to visit me at the hospital. I don't remember. Anyways, so we were shooting her first scene, and I had her booked for like her first three scenes. She came to the office with her agent for a go see. We're like, she's adorable. Let's shoot her. She was nineteen years old. Shot her first three scenes. Now she came from a really small town. She had a boyfriend, and she's only been with, like, I think she said, like, five guys her whole life. So, her first scene is with two guys, with uh, two super, like, like you know, gonzo performers, you know, like, guys, like, like they're, like, fucking machines. Uh, so, I'm standing there talking to her, like, doing an interview with her, and she's standing within, like, all the lights. And the two guys come over and they start pawing at her and the scene just starts. Like, boom, there it goes. It's like, and it looks really cool because it's like, it's like natural, you know, it's not like stage bullshit. It's, yeah, it's natural. really hard to check. Yeah. You know, so, so we just, let's go with it. And with Anabolic, what we would do is we would shoot the hardcore pictures halfway through the scene or towards the end of the scene where we cut and we would shoot the pictures because uh, they always wanted to have... The pictures of the girl, like like she's been, you know, like she's been run through. She's done a scene rather than like all yeah. pretty and makeup and stuff like hair messed up, sweaty and things like that. So we stop and she goes and uh, starts putting her clothes back on. So we're like, what 
what is she doing? So she sits down at the, the kitchen table and I sit down next to her and I'm like, what's wrong? And she starts shaking and crying. And now I'm like freaked out. Like, oh my God, what, what, what just happened? And then the guys, the guys are like freaked out. They're like, are you okay? Is everything fine? And I'm like, are you, what's going on? And she's all like, she goes, I was still nervous and, and I didn't get all my nervous energy out. And, uh, and, and she's just like, you know, tears in her eyes. And, and I'm like, and I go to her, look, I could take the tape out of the camera, break the tape, no scene, no career. You could fly back home and everything's fine. And she's like, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I'll go, look, why don't you go call your boyfriend? Do whatever you want to do. It's your call. We're going to be inside. So she goes outside uh, to the pool area, comes back like a few minutes later. And she's like, let's finish this off. And, you know, we finished the scene. And, look, you know, I shot a couple more times. And then a year later, I shot her and she was bouncing off walls. She was like, she, she found her groove and she was doing her thing. But when I... After that scene, I went back to the office and I was telling the owner of the company um, about what happened. And he's looking at me and he goes, did you record her crying? And I go, no. And he goes, well, next time make sure the camera's rolling. No. And I was just like, this fucking asshole. Are you kidding me? Like, this is a human being, man. Like, this is this is not our job to do that. But you know, the thing was, he came from the world of um, uh, that, that old school, like, uh, pornographers back when, when, like, they were shooting rough scenes and he had uh, people that, that he used to work with that were working on this website called Meat Holes, which was really intense, insane, hardcore, um, content that the first time I saw it I was like mortified of what I was looking at but that was their whole thing is they 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 were more about mentally breaking someone down which was to me horrendous to do um but that was kind of like unfortunately the standard for a lot of companies and that's why like like I always would defend the company extreme associates that I worked for because for whatever extreme associates was never would we emotionally break someone down like that to a point where like they're legit crying, you know, just to get just to get that emotion out of them? Fuck that. Are you kidding me? And if I ever saw that on my set, done. Because I actually had the the guy who ran meat holes show up on my set at Anabolic once. And I don't know who he was because uh, my boss brought him there. And when I started, when I heard him, first of all, he came up to me and like, Hi, nice to meet you. I love your work, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, cool. I'm like, I don't know who this fucking guy is. He's a little older, older, older Seems like a nice guy. Then he walked over to the girl. And I was setting up lights and stuff. And I heard him talking to the girl and asking her questions. And then it clicked in who this guy was. Uh, so I walked up to, to my boss and I go, is this who it is? You know, I, you know, I don't want to say his name. but And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, you need to get him off my fucking set. Like, there's no way this dude should be in my set. And she took him and she and she left. You know, but, but the, the, these are the things that were tolerated um, and, and glorified in many ways. I've never tried to fuck anybody out of money. I've never tried to fuck anybody on set. Period. And then that's just, and that's where, and I try to treat everybody with the, the respect I would want that my my loved ones would be treated with. And if we all did that, and I, and my, and I would always say, like, you know something, you don't have, like, especially in our industry, you know, you really don't have to throw your power around if you want to get laid. If you're a nice guy, somebody would probably want to hook up with you just because they like you as Absolutely. a human being, and and that's and that's the part that I think people forget. And yeah, I've I've seen a, you know I've seen so much of it, and and I would just warn talent, you know, um, especially when we shoot a lot of new girls. I'm like, hey, you know, when you go to other sets, may remember that you're the boss, and if there's something happening, hit hit up your agent. I would always tell them like something you're comfortable. With, don't do it. And if you still feel uncomfortable, tell your agent. And if your agent won't do anything about it, you walk off set, and that's it. Um, but again, when when you're young and, and you're brand new, you just don't know. You know, you just don't know. And um, uh, look, look, when I took my my ex to one of the award shows, people were like trying to grope her, and they didn't know who she was. You know, you're just like. And that has always been my arguments. Like, just because we're in this industry does not give you the right to grab uh-huh. on anybody. Just because it it's not it's not like it's a forest. Like, I get it. If I'm going to the forest, the, the bear has the right to eat me. You know, hopefully he won't. But if I'm going to an award show or even to a set, 
doesn't doesn't give you the right to grab on me. Period. Uh, no. and, and you know, and honestly, that goes both ways. It's not just guys on girls. It's girls on guys. It's girls on girls. I've seen it. I I saw at what the, the award show. I saw a producer, a female producer, try to grope and you know uh, on my date. Yeah, like, and I figured nothing like that because like you've never shared stories with me where things like that happened to you, and it's because you're 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 strong and and I um that's the part that I talent needs to know is that. Um, um, st- just to stand up for themselves because there's not one paycheck in our industry that you could retire on. So what's yeah. the point of doing something you're not comfortable doing, whether it, it's on camera, off camera, anything like that? This for for whatever people think outside the industry, how much people in the industry make, they don't. They completely don't. I I, I you know I I remember um. For a while, years ago, gosh, so many years ago, they, they, they there was an article that was posted about what the, the the net worth of like top ten porn stars, and it was funny because Jaden James was all like on it, like like number three or four or some shit, and I know, I know this is all bullshit. This is just what they these people assume. Yeah, what they think. Yeah, you know, and so I see this, and I and I and I text her, and I go. Motherfucker, you're paying for every lunch and dinner we ever go on again. And she's all like, what are you talking about? And I sent her the link <laughs> for being like this multimillionaire. <laughs> and she's like, what? And I'm like, yeah, hey, man. Whatever's on the internet, it's true, right? So that's it. You're, yeah. you're paying for everything. But yeah, the, the, our industry is not like there's, it's not the golden ticket to retirement or to to a better life. Uh, so you have to kind of stand up for yourself and, and do what you feel comfortable doing. Um, and uh, I think there's, there's a change coming. It's already coming. And uh, um, I, I think some of it might be um, too much in, in the sense where it's becoming too coddled because it's still a fantasy for people to watch. Um, like I, I saw somebody talking about like, oh, they should ban hardcore scenes. No, what they should do is they should show only talent that's comfortable doing it, and you agree on everything that's being shot. And Absolutely, at the end of the day, it's just entertainment. Yeah. It's exactly the same as you know watching, uh, you know, people being murdered on TV in a TV show or gun violence, or you know, they show they have no problem showing rape on TV. And how is that any? better than you know hardcore porn that, that but that's that's exactly it and i think people that are trying to make it into such of uh soft core like no we got to only do this th- what they're what they're doing is they're not making porn into entertainment and a fantasy they're making it into real life and this is what happens with when politicians want to take control of porn when they're like, no, this is not entertainment, and we need to put these people in jail. No, this is entertainment, and everything's scripted. And so there's nothing that's going off script. If it is, the talent should go like, nope, I'm not doing this. And yeah. and and that's like when um, Rob Black was fighting for uh, his obscenity charges. He used the American Beauty uh, defense where in American Beauty, Kevin Spacey's character is uh, is fantasizing about sleeping with his daughter's best friend, who's like fifteen, you know. And then that, I think that's just where the whole that that the argument with condom porn comes in. What fantasy do you have about your neighbor, about your friend, whoever you were fantasizing about? And before you guys do it, you strap a condom on. <laughs> what? No, no. Porn's a fantasy. It needs to be a fantasy, you know. And um, so when you're watching porn, and you know. And they're like, oh, okay, I gotta put a condom on. And that kind of takes away from the fantasy of like that passion. Oh my God, we're so passionate about each other. We're just gonna do it. Um, it's okay if you know the performers want to do it that way. Like totally up to their discretion. Right. But like all of them mandate it. No, that's not how it should be. Like if you're comfortable with you know both of you guys are tested within the the testing qualifications and you are comfortable with one another and you don't want to use a condom as a team, then I think that should be allowed. But, you know, if one of you is like, I would really rather use a condom even though we're both regularly tested. Yeah. Like, I think that should be up to the team. Yeah, it it should be. And everything should be about the person, their body, um, who they're comfortable shooting with because it's their body. It's their body and their mind. Uh, 
and, and you know, and then this is where I think the industry is going to be in a weird situation because now there, are, there's a lot of mandating of what you can't say or can't say about certain scenes. You know, at the end of the day, it's a fantasy, and and it's a fantasy on camera. But for the people doing it, it's still their body. So no one should dictate to them what to shoot, with who to shoot, and how to shoot. Um, you come up with, you know, you, you collaborate. And you come up with an idea and, and you do it. And if someone's not comfortable, they shouldn't do it. Um, Absolutely. And I, and I think that's where it's heading. Uh, and, you know, and, and that's the whole thing is it's it, it, if, if you're shooting cool, cool stuff and you're respecting people, it, all hands on board. It's fine. It's just that, you know, then you, you get a handful of people that uh, want to push the limits. And uh, unfortunately for them. It's catching up, <laughs> you know, and uh, that's it. I think we talked for a long time again. Let's see how long. Yeah, only an hour and a half this time. Oh, 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 well, good. Well, because my, my battery hasn't died. My battery died last time, so. <laughs> yeah, we're getting progressively more on track, I think. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> I, I, yeah, the, the last one, it's funny because when I cut, I made the other one a two part. I haven't even used the second part because. Right afterwards, uh, you know, everything started happening. So I wanted to talk to my old friends, my old filmmaking partner, who's black. We were black Russian films in film school. And uh, one of my friends who was a black author. In fact, he has a book for you. Um, he he wrote these books, uh, The Last Prince of Atlantis. Um, so he's he actually signed a book and he gave it to me to give to you. Uh, I oh, you're just talking about this. I can't wait. Yeah, so you're gonna get that, and he gave me another book, and he's his uh p- part two just came out too, so he's been he's been out there on tour, like you know, signing them and selling them and to people uh, that like conventions, like they're like street fairs or something, like it's kind of cool because he's been posting a lot of pictures of it. So yeah, so so I wanted to have podcast with them and just to to get their perspective because the author Leonard, he's um he's he was out there protesting. And he's like, you know, and he's older, he's closer to my age. So he's out there with like with the younger kids and like, hey, don't do that. Don't do that. Do this. You know, he was uh, yeah. such, trying to trying to give them his feedback as a as a as, you know, as an older person. Uh, and then my family. We've done this before. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and, and my filmmaking partner, you know, him and I, we were like the two hip hop guys at uh, in film school. So we were like the the. The, the stepchildren of our of the film department so we did a lot of projects together we actually talked about we did i don't know if i ever told you we recreated the the 92 la riots with legos um, no <laughs> that was a that was our freaking uh, animation we had to do an animation a stop motion project shooting it with a bolex which is like a wind-up camera and then you do one frame at a time so i'm like what if we do like the la riots that would be kind of funny so uh I was um, I was living in these people's garage. They turned it into like a little apartment kind of room. So we made my little bedroom into a whole city. We had one of those big fold-out tables. We built um, little, little buildings and bought little cars and had all these Legos. We even got a big orange just, um, 18-wheeler truck because Reginald Denny, who's one of the guys who got attacked during he got dragged out of his truck and beaten almost to death live on camera and no cops showed up because i guess they were too afraid to go and save this poor person uh but we we created all of that with legos um and now i'm trying to find the footage i know i have the footage somewhere but that's like 95 oh my gosh 25 years ago um but yeah we did we did stuff like that and our our portfolio project was really cool it was like a um Boys in the Hood meets Menace Society. We, we, huh. we, we were we were the guys. We were the we, we we were the rebels who did a movie. Well, he was he was director, writer, director, and I was the DP, and we produced it. And it was cool. It was really cool. And and Leonard was the lead. So Leonard and I have been friends for a long time. The, the author guy, and then I uh, wound up using him in a handful of movies afterwards. Used him in a bunch of stuff. So, and he was in Mamastad. Which is cool. He was like in Amistad, and he said he learned a lot about the his, you know, history of slavery, because um, when he was cast for Amistad, they kind of like put these actors through the ringer at what it would feel like to be on the boat in chains. Yeah. Um, and um, so I wanted to get their perspective on uh, and and and, and uh, their stories, uh, you know, growing up in in you know 
and in this environment. So it was cool. Yeah, so, absolutely, so, it's an important it's an important thing to be heard, especially from you know the actual lived experience, not just well, I think this and this. Like, no, yeah. I, you and I don't have a great opinion of it because we don't have those same lived experiences that they do. And it's important to put their voices and really amplify them as best we can um, to, you know, have them be heard and have people uh, really listen and get a feeling for what people that have the experiences really think and feel. Uh, Because, you know, obviously we can speculate as much as we can, as much as we want to, and really uh, try and identify with them, but we can't. And we don't have the same history of oppression and the same history of, you know, redlining and just racial inequality and systematic racism and it, all of these things that they fear every day, getting murdered by police or, you know, uh, just being racially profiled and being pulled over or everything, everything. It's, uh, we don't have those same lived experiences. So it was really important for you to amplify those at the time, and I'm glad you did that. Have you, have you been watching 90 Day Fiance? The, the, the no, movie? I haven't. Oh. Uh, the other way, I haven't started the season yet. I like to accumulate a few episodes and then binge watch them. Yeah, that 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 that's a lot better because then like, then you have to sit and wait for the next step of a whole week. Oh man, it's brutal. Yeah, I can't do that. Yeah, that's why I'm glad I watched all the, all those seasons back to back to back to back on on the TLC app. It was just so much yeah. better. You're just like, okay, I well, need to watch the next one and the next one. Yeah, it's it's. And, and, and you know, and, and the new one, um, "Happily Ever After," started as well. Oh, I haven't seen that yet. Yeah, that one's good. Oh, so good. I mean, they're all good. They're all like train wrecks. Who doesn't like to watch a train wreck? A good old fashioned train wreck. Seriously. See, it just makes me feel so much better about myself. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Do you have anything? Do you want to promote anything? Anything you got coming up? Anything exciting? I've got nothing. Nothing. Like, nothing at all. Nothing at all. I'm still doing OnlyFans, OnlyFans.com slash Christy Mack. And, you know, of course, my Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, all really dead right now to amplify uh, other people's voices. But they're, you know, slash Christy Mack, all the same. So so what do you do on OnlyFans? Like, obviously, I I, I have no idea because I don't go. I do a little bit of everything. Like, I'll post a selfie every day, um, usually topless. I get some dildo action going every once in a while. No shit. Like, if I'm feeling randy. Yeah, there's, there's all kinds of stuff on there, man. Oh, my God. Look, I, I learned so much about you today. You buy escorts. You diddle yourself on OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> like, I thought you were like on OnlyFans. You're just like, here's a picture of my foot. <laughs> here's a picture of my ta- new too. tattoo. Wait, do you have those, any more? Those foot people, those foot people, I'm telling you what. Mm-hmm. They go hard. Yeah. I got keep feet. So they pay a lot of money for that. There, there, there used to be, oh, you de- definitely never danced at Crazy Horse in San Francisco. There's this, mm-hmm. so, so there's this tiny little old Asian man who massages the girl's feet. He doesn't even get paid. I think they just tip him. So a couple of times I've been there with different girls and he would massage their feet. He would just come in, you know, have his whole little kit. But there's definitely like spank material for the guy because sometimes he would start working his way up and the girls would have to push his hands back down. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, ah, he's getting paid in other ways, man. He's getting paid in memories. It's, it's, he's, he's good. But, uh, yeah, he's fine. You don't need to tip him. He's good. Yeah, yeah. And they're just like, oh my God. Like, you thought that he was coming in because he's being a nice, nice older gentleman, but now, creepy, creepy old man. Creepy old man with a foot. Hell no. Yeah. Yeah, foot, foot people are, uh, they're, they're, they're hardcore. They're, I mean, like, you talk about like a loyal, loyal genre of fan base. Fantastic. Absolutely, I'm so happy that they're still here ten years later. I'm like, let's go. So, so what do you do? You just show them your feet? Do you put put like, like ice cream on them or walk on? Like, like, like while I'm getting a pedicure, I'll take pictures and videos uh-huh. and stuff, or like I'll play with bubbles in the bathtub, or you know, just simple things. I'm wearing cute shoes, I'll take the shoes off. And you don't do that stomping stuff, shoes. right? You don't do that stomping stuff where you stomp on little mice in high heels. No, I I uh, I don't do that. <laughs> okay, 
<laughs> you know, that was that was a shit for a long time. That was disgusting. I don't know if people, people got away with it. I don't know. I that I was just so weird about that. Like, what's wrong with you? Why don't you do that? Yeah, I don't, I don't care if it's somebody somebody fetish. Like, don't do that. No, don't do that. No, you're just supposed to bash bash them on the head and throw them in the snake aquarium. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah, but, yeah, but that's nature. That's just nature. Yeah, dude, just stomp it on the, on a little creature with your high heels. It's kind of. I'm done. Oh god. That's so gross. So wow, like I, you got a full on like OnlyFans thing going. That's that's awesome. Sheesh. Yeah. Wow. So the uh, so do you think like those like the foot fetish people are the most loyal ones to you, or like the most active? I mean, I I feel like. They're extremely loyal. It's got to be like my most loyal fans. I usually keep about 12,000 people subscribed uh, Holy per shit. month. Yeah, so it's a, they're amazing. And like I, I'll respond to messages and everything. There's a couple of guys that message me every day. So we have our conversations and I'll sit there and have my coffee and, you know, let them know what I'm going to do for the day and send them personalized pictures and stuff. So it's fun. It's a, it's a lot of fun to do that because I won't respond to messages anywhere else because it's tedious and, like, obviously they're not paying me for it. Right. So why, why would I give them my time for free when they have so little to offer? And you know, so only fans is a great alternative for that. And, 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 and this is where the whole thing of branding comes in because if you were just like a, you know, just like a pretty regular chick who doesn't have a fan base, you're not having 12,000 subscribers so no so and 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 you're pretty much forced to like answer every dm just to get people to like you know talk to you but yeah that's smart like you build a fucking brand and live off that plus it's like it's a your own shit so like it's not even really work i mean I, you know it's a job you're there's probably a lot of work to to shooting clips all the time but it's for yourself you're your own boss which is fantastic Damn. Yeah, I just upload it whenever I want, however I want, and, you know, just go from there. So I, I control all of it, which is fantastic. Everyone should do it that way. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I wish somebody would pay me for my beard. Damn it. I need to figure this out. You can only make fans and do it. You can do it. I could do, like, beard and scar videos. Oh, man. I know there's, like, scar fetishes out there. Well, we need to have, like, a regular call. We talk about personal shit um, in the next couple yeah. of days. <laughs> I, I'm going to Vegas for the first time in nine months this Monday or Tuesday. Are you driving? Yeah. I, not my truck. I'm going to rent a car. My truck is... Oh, no, good, no good. Yeah. yeah, I was going to say, like, I wouldn't trust that. No, no. It's got a oil leak now, and it's got, like, 280,000 miles on it. it it's, it's been there, done that. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Nine months. Been paying bills on that bad boy for nine months time to go and <laughs> at least sit on the couch for a couple of days um give it a break yeah, that's right that's right and see some you know old friends i haven't seen in, in a long time yeah so, make them come visit you though like don't go driving around all over vegas visiting them no 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 definitely not it, and yeah okay. yeah I, the only place i honestly really want to go is antique mall of america remember the place we went to I think yes, I love that place. Yeah. You'll find all kinds of stuff. Yeah, because I, I, I sent you a picture of the character I'm going to be playing. I need some props, some more props <laughs> for, for my Russian pornographer guy. Maybe you'll win an award for best non-sex role in a form. I was nominated for uh, Viking Girls Gone Horny, in, uh, uh, non best non-sex role, and I should have won because I'm probably the only one that was nominated there who doesn't do any sex scenes, so you would think they would give it to somebody who's never done a scene and legit... But no, God forbid, God forbid. Yeah, you think, but nobody wants to give you any awards. No, you know why? I'm not a scumbag. That's why. I know. That's exactly <laughs> why. You know, if uh, I'm back to back XRC or best web director, and if they don't have it this year, whoosh, might as well retire that bad boy. Retire that award. Just, just, that's right. That's right. Try retire it with me. Um, <laughs> but you go take care of your uh, chupacabra. Um, okay. And I'm going to go and I don't know what to do. What, today's what, Friday? Yes, it's the weekend. No party. Uh, <laughs> I was invited to a 4th of July party tomorrow. We should not be partying right now. I know. Oh, my God. There was a reflection on my TV. I thought it was a ghost. <laughs> How do you know it wasn't a ghost? Oh, I, I slept in my house the last couple of nights. Oh, big yeah. move. Yeah, very. Yeah. And, uh, 
It was kind of scary the first night. Nine months, not sleeping in a haunted condo. Uh, <laughs> All right. Like find its way over to your parents' house and oh. be like, hey, what's up? I'll, I'll tell you, though, I had horrible nightmares the first night. Horrible nightmares. I slept, um, I have my Fitbit on, and it said I slept three and a half hours, and I woke up 16 times. <laughs> yeah, I was restless 16 times. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Crazy nightmares. Oh, well. Okay, I'm really going now. Okay, bye. Bye. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Okay, bye. Bye. She's an exhibitionist, carjacking business, jacking dicks off on a random gentleman. Girlfriends are in it, seen them on the corner for about a minute. Then a car drives by, watch a move, hop up in it. No weapons in sight, one reach for my zipper. Otherwise, she wears fuzz into the mic. This our whip and our dick. This a car jack. Other one whispers into the whip. This a car jack.